Hey guys, welcome back to the workshop. So, uh, this is the beginning of part three in the uh, Bridgeport Proto Track repair and upgrade series. Um, I've gotten my plastic lines from McMaster. They sent them and they came in one day. Uh, I've went ahead and installed them on the ball screws. So there's the X, well there's the Y and there's the X ball screw lubrication point. Um, I've reattached the ball screws inside the machine. Let's see if I get you in here to have a look. And it's a bad angle, I can't really get the phone in there, but you can see the uh, lubrication line running down underneath the ball screw. So. Now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and uh, we use five minute epoxy. Uh, these are very loose in here. So we're gonna go ahead and epoxy these in. And I also think we're gonna epoxy these red lines to the black lines. Black lines fit pretty snugly in there, but I think we'll put a dab around the uh, perimeter that way I don't have to worry about them falling out. Once I get the lines epoxied in, I'm gonna let that set up for a while and um, then we're gonna, before we put the tail back on, we're gonna use the oiler and make sure that all the points are being lubricated. Uh, the original lines, which I didn't play with, they're, I don't know what this is, Blue RTV. They seem to be holding, so I'm not gonna play with them. Uh, this one line here is for the um, the Y oiler, and then this line here, which just goes off the camera view, is for the X. And we'll slide one into the other and then cut it once I figure out. But I'm going to degrease those thoroughly. Uh, I went ahead and I cleaned up the ball screws pretty good. Uh, wiped them down, try to get the crap out of them. So this machine is clean, and we can go ahead and start reassembling it once I epoxy the lines in. Okay gang, well everything's been reassembled, the lines have been epoxied in. And she's been drying for a while. So I am going to wait probably till tomorrow let this dry for 24 hours and I'm going to test and make sure that the uh, oiler is lubricating all the points and if in fact it's working we're going to go ahead and throw the uh, table back on and start reassembly. Okay guys so we hustled today we got the machine pretty much put back together. Um, there's not much more I could do with the machine as far as the looks I don't have the room to take it apart and paint it and uh, the problem with the machine is even if I cleaned it I couldn't get a coat of paint on it only because it seems like it's chipping the paint that's on there now so uh, I'm satisfied that the the ways are in good shape uh, I fixed the oilers I repaired everything as far as uh, the ball screws getting lubed and the oilers um, all the tubing, everything, I epoxied everything in, I, I'm, uh, I showed you that. Uh, it's nice, it doesn't leak. You get a nice oil film between the table and the front way. Um, I'm getting nice oil on the, the Y axis. It's, it's dripping down on both sides. Uh, so that's that's working fine. The uh, I had a problem with the switch. The contactor was really dirty and filthy. So I took it apart. I cleaned it. it seems to be functioning now. It was tripping when I had the spindle on. Um, it's got the transformer down here. So it also gives you some kind of clean power for this box. Which uh, underneath there is a, is a plug for the computer and the lights. And... Uh, the power Z feed. Now getting to the power Z feed, here you can see all the oil in the way, so everything is nice and lubricated. I won't damage anything. The uh, the power Z doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't light up. It doesn't move. So that's 
I don't really care about that. That's a story for another time. Could take it apart, replace it, fix it, whatever. Ordering a set of weigh covers. So, super important. These weighs are in premium good shape, so we want to keep it that way. So, we're going to get a set of weigh covers on there. Uh, we're going to clean, you know, clean that up, make sure everything's nice and there's no dirt falling in there. Um, the spindle. The spindle's super quiet. The only thing that's making a little noise is the draw bar that's in there. I need to be taller to do this. Let me pull this draw bar out. So you can see uh, the head is, is much different color and everything. So this must have been changed out. It's got the full range of speeds. The uh, power up and down, everything works. You see the Z-axis. She's moving. Let's reverse it, bring it back up. Just come back up. So I'm satisfied the head is good. The head seems to be working fine. Um, let's see what else. The only thing I, I seem to have lost, I seem to have lost the lock here. So that's freewheeling for now, but that's okay. We'll fix that. And as far as the proto track, proto track's working. I've got a program loaded in here. Um, Gonna use the uh, the next button to run the program. Sorry about that jiggling around. I got you handle. This is the uh, next button for the program, and you can see. Let's try to back up a little bit so you can see the whole thing. So this is actually running each step. Okay, and actually if I, if I go right ahead and run the program again, you can see the load tool. It tells you when the servos get into position. So she seems to be working okay. We're just gonna fix that one hand wheel get some way covers and uh, I guess the next installation of the video will be uh, making more first part on the machine programming something simple uh, I also want to work on uh, connecting a modern computer up to the proto track and trying to drip feed uh, some steps to it we'll see if we could do that I'm not sure but it's fine and uh, I think one of the first jobs is we're gonna make some servo adapters so here's our Bridgeport boss and we want to change out these big old stepper motors and we want to put some new modern servo motors on here that's the z-axis this thing's a beast so um, and of course this is gonna have the new centroid system which is uh, fully compatible with uh, Fusion 360 and I will be able to do fully like 3, 3D um, stuff on here so uh, 
The only drawback be behind this machine is no tool changer. But it does have the uh, Ericsson 30 taper quick change on there, so at least that's a plus. And of course, we'll build a nice tool library so we could do it. So we got to get started on this machine. Um, got a lot of parts I want to make. And uh, at the moment, I can't do anything because it was just too of a over, like a, uh, the job was just too time consuming. So at least we have the proto track to uh to get us going and then we'll we'll move on from there we use it as a stepping stone but all right guys thanks for watching stay tuned hope you guys stay safe all right take care